Today we're being joined by Gold Coast AFRW defender Georgia Clayton. Georgia, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. No worries. Now, you kicked your first goal this season for the Gold Coast Suns. H how was it and do you remember it? Yeah, look, a few people have asked me that. Um, I don't yeah. really remember afterwards. Like, it's funny how excited you get. It just kind of goes by and, yet yeah, it's hard to recall. But, um, yeah, I just remember being super excited and then, yeah, everyone yeah. on the team getting super excited for me as well. Yes, that's for sure. Let's refresh your memory because, as you know, I filmed it at the game that day against Richmond and here it is. Awesome. Yep, Look, you get trapped. Touched. Here we go. Go. Yes! Yes! Let's go! The Suns hit the front. It's another good goal that I get on camera. They're up by five. Halfway to the third. They're getting around. It must have been the first goal. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, Georgia, remember that? Now I remember it. Yeah, amazing you got it on camera. That was good timing. <laughs> I know, it was good timing because around that area of the ground, they were getting a bit, uh, how do I put it, the security were allowing you for parts of that game to be around that area and then they push you slightly across and ended up being a better angle in the end because originally I was a bit more towards behind the goal, so they got a better angle that way without any goal posts or anything in the way. But, uh, yeah, yeah how, you obviously remember that goal very well and um, – Obviously, being a defender, there's not many goals you get the opportunity to. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I think this year I've been kind of going between defender and winger, so there's possibly a little bit more opportunity, but still, yeah, yeah it's um, yeah, definitely not as much opportunity as, say, a forward, so pretty exciting. Yeah, well, I should have said this from the start, but you've played 18 games. You're originally from Canberra, so how did that opportunity to the Gold Coast Suns come about and uh, what prompted the move? Because obviously you moved from a different state. Yeah, yeah. So I was um, I was quite lucky, actually. I grew up playing netball volleyball, so I didn't start footy till quite recently. Um, yeah. So I swapped over a few years ago and I was just playing in Canberra Local League. Um, and then I got the opportunity to play with the Giants in what was called like a summer series. Um, so I yeah. played with them and I was like... To go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was lucky to play with the Giants in a summer series. Um, I was lucky enough that I had an agent at this time and he just um, sent my clips off to a few different clubs that he was in contact with um, and Gold Coast Suns happened to be one of them. And then it all happened really, really quickly. So it was within two or three weeks I was, yeah, moving up to the Gold Coast and starting my adventure up here. So, so did you speak to any clubs in that journey or was it just the Gold Coast that approached you? In that yeah, time. yeah, um, yeah, because I was playing with the Giants in the summer series, I was speaking to them a little bit. Um, but yeah, Gold Coast were, um, were the first, I guess, to kind of approach me and, and really make it happen. What's the week to week like for an AFW play? Obviously, a bit different to the men's, obviously, a bit more uh, full on, but obviously, as I've spoken to a lot of guests from the AFW, there's still a pretty hectic week to week, yeah. Yeah, no, it's pretty crazy. It's um, We're pretty lucky, though, with how much footy we're getting exposed to now. I think I kind of joined yeah. the AFLW at a really good time where we're doing lots of footy. Mm. Um, so we'll pretty much be in at the club at least five days, but sometimes more. Um, okay. And so there's quite a bit of training and then, but a lot of us will work or study as well. So I'm tending, I'm a physio outside of footy. So I'm doing okay. about two days of work at the moment um, in terms of physio work. And then pretty much the rest of it's at um, um, footy. So with the club, obviously they're in a good position at the moment. Obviously had that draw against the power on the weekend. First off with that, how was that game for you got girls? Obviously, at a close game, Jacqueline Dupais seemed to kick some big moments and some big marks against Collingwood. I remember Vic Park early in the year and hit yeah. that nice goal to draw the game. But I'm sure on the other side, that moment was good, but a little bit disappointing considering the gap between the two sides. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Dupes is in great form. She's playing some of her best footy mm. this year. We're very lucky. Um, yeah, that was a really, really tough game. So I think, um, and I think in terms of the ladder, you kind of go into a game with expectations, but you never know how it's going to play out. So you've just got to play yeah. every game the same. Um, and it was a particularly tricky game. I think the conditions of the wind just made it a little bit trickier. And I think at times we didn't adapt to that as well as they did. Um, they tended mm. to make use of the wind a bit better than we did. So we were quite lucky, I think, in the end to get those last two goals and and draw it because mm. it was yeah it was a very tough one out there 
with the season as a whole, though, so far you're in the eight with two rounds to go. We'll see two big matchups coming up the next two games against GWS and then the Bombers. Um, two sides again, or oh, Essendon are similar on the ladder, and the Giants just just had a good win on the weekend. Um, so how do you girls? How do you think the girls have gone so far this season? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've um, we've been pretty happy with how we're playing. Like our footy is looking really good and we've really stepped it up, I think, from last season to this season, just the type of footy, the ball movement, all of those things. Um, we trained a lot in the off-season, so it was really exciting to see that we're, we're doing that out on the field. Um, yeah, certainly we're kind of really focused on our, our game to on Friday night, um, one game at a time, but we're certainly, mm. um, yeah, certainly hoping that we can play a good game of footy, play our brand of footy. We're really confident in what we can do. We've just got to make sure that we go out and do it and hold it for four quarters. Do you recall the goal Danielle Ponta got in the centre square the icon bucket at the start of the season? Yes. Yeah, I do yeah. remember that. Yeah. Do you think yourself or any teammate that would be able to replicate that moment or thinks they can? Yeah. Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I'm not too sure off the top of my head where um, – yeah. We're quite lucky and we're quite a contested team, so we tend to get the ball first quite often, more often than not. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't I don't know off the top of my head, but hopefully we can get some. That would be handy. <laughs> Very true. Now, I'm not sure if you remember this goal as well. I'm pretty certain it was against you girls. Yeah, it was actually from Salaris. Mm-hmm. She kicked it on the pocket. So, Daniel Ponte, they go, I want to compare the goal and see which one you think is better. This one I was lucky enough to capture on footage as well in the exact same game, so I'll show you here. Yeah. Do you know that's the wrong one? But anyway, don't worry about it. It was basically from the – I had the wrong clip up. It was That was your one. Um, yeah. Basically, it was from the boundary. I don't know if you remember it. Charlie Robon tackled the, uh, one of the Richmond girls, and then she got yes. it from the pocket, left pocket, left foot. It bounced over Mon Conti and a couple of other yeah. players as well, and then went from the pocket. But it be a bit hard if I didn't have the footage. But both of them were really good. And it, for yes. me, it was hard to pick. But yeah. um, which, which one would you, would you feel was, was better? Oh, in terms of the okay. Richmond one and the – Ponta one. And Daniel Ponta's one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're a bit different, aren't they? I think um mm. like skills wise, the from the pocket mm. is a hard kick. And to be able to get yeah. that and get it to bounce over people, like that's it's just so hard to defend. You can't really defend that. Um no. but then Ponta's is equally impressive. It's just a long kick that just kept on going. But um mm. yeah, so I don't know, probably the the kick from the pocket, but they're both accelerate, yeah. I would say. Yeah. They, they work. Yeah. Now correct me if I'm wrong. In one of the interviews you did on the club website, Doey, is that a real nickname or did I mishear that? Where did that <laughs> yeah, nickname come Dowie. from? Yeah, so it kind of started before I even got here. Tara, our captain, um, she's known yeah. for making nicknames around the team. Um, so before I came, because my last name's Clayton, um, mm. they thought Clay and then that went to Play-Doh. Oh, yeah. um, and then from Play-Doh, I got Doey and it's just stuck. So I'm Doey now. <laughs> now... This is this seems to be a trend. We're talking about the one game against Richmond. That that last few minutes with the with Tara, you speak of the skipper who got the winning point. How was that moment? And where were you in that position? I wish it was on the side I was on. It would have been better for the footage. But anyway, and what did yeah, you think yeah. of that um, moment? How good it was? Yeah, that was a huge moment. So I was actually on the field. I was in our forward 50 and I remember just okay. thinking, all right, we just need us. We need any score here. doesn't matter what it is. Um, so I was kind of just waiting for Tara to kick it. But I think – Credit to her, and I'm so glad she was the one with the footy. She was just super mm. calm. I think a lot of people were yelling at her, and she was just like, no, nah, I know what I'm doing. Mm. I've got this. Just took the time mm. and just knew she just had to get a point and, and nailed it. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah. actually remember, funny enough, in that same game, in the first quarter, I don't know who the player was, but she took an advantage of someone who was about 35 out in the, in the first quarter would have been, and she got yes. ripped in. And then it was probably good. I'm assuming she got spoken to about it during the – break or whatever and then to have that you know moment happen and then be the hero at the end it's kind of a surreal moment I suppose to have from getting told off to then being the hero <laughs> yeah absolutely and and footy can be a bit like that I'm sure you've seen plenty of it yourself yeah. there's moments where you wish you did something a bit different and there's other moments where you do exactly what's needed and um yeah and sometimes you've got less than a second to make a decision and it's not always the right mm. one um but certainly at, uh, yeah at the end of the game it absolutely was and I was so glad that she was the one with the footy in her hands sure favorite teammate at the club favorite teammate that's a tricky one um I really like at the moment our club's got this really nice culture and we all get along really well um it's but good. I do live with two others um okay. Talia Maya and Gabrielle um Bartimode Webster so I'd probably be a little bit um biased towards them they are my housemates <laughs> that's fair I mean you got to say then they don't have to annoy you all day um yeah. coach's pet 
Coach's pet. Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, coach's pet. I'd have to think about that one, actually. We're all. That's um, okay. Yeah. What's the best individual game? What's the best individual game you've ever played in for yourself personally? Um, mm, I think certainly this season, I feel like my footy's um, stepped up quite a bit from last season. Um, and having, I think, swapped over to footy a little bit later, um, it's taken me a little bit to kind of get into the swing of things. Um, but I think one of the best games I played was was this year against Western Bulldogs. Just took some contested marks um, and held them and. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, some good inside 50s. Um, yeah, I was just feeling really confident and just had a good game. That's good. So I was going to ask you some outside footy injuries, but you mentioned before the netball and volleyball, which I noticed online as well. Um, how did you, how were you as a netball and a volleyball player and did you enjoy those sports? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I played netball from a young age and I think it's kind of exciting now. I feel like girls have a lot more options. When I was younger, it was a bit like, oh, if you like sport, you play netball. Um, so I yeah. did and I, and I loved it and I was lucky enough to um, play in the a &L, So it's kind of like the tier under the super netball. Um, uh -huh. So I played for, yeah, Canberra, Canberra Darters and then um, the Canberra Giants. Uh, and I was lucky to do some junior Australian camps um, and tours when I was a bit younger. And then probably similar in volleyball, did quite a few um, junior Australian tours when I was younger as well oh, and nice. um, played a bit locally. Yeah, so I've been quite lucky with my sport. And um, I think, yeah, growing up playing other sports has certainly helped my footy. Um, it, you just have other skills from other sports that you can you nice. can turn towards. Was it hard to let those sports go to transition to footy? Um, it was a little bit, but I think too, I just played them for so long um, yeah. and I I think just watching the AFLW, I was loving what was happening um, for women's sport, but also just for the AFLW. And I kind of just, mm. the more I watched, the more I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and then when I played lo locally, I just loved it. Yeah. Um, I think I love the idea of running around and being able to give people a few bumps, whereas netball, you kind of had to hold that into yourself a little bit more. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, I've, um, I don't think it was too hard in the end and I'm just <laughs> loving my footy now. So, Yeah. That's very fair. Who do you feel is the best player in the competition? Not necessarily this year, but just in general. Oh, um, tricky one. I think there's um, there's quite a few players out there that are really making a stand for themselves. I think mm -hmm. the first one that jumps to mind, and it's probably um, I'm a bit biased because they're a teammate, but I think mm -hmm. Charlie Rowbottom's form is just mm -hmm. so consistent and I think Incredible. I love, yeah, I love the way mm -hmm. she plays. She just gets in um, and she gets... Mm -hmm smashed every game and she just gets back mm. up and her contested work is just amazing and her getting the ball for us and then us being able to work it is a huge part of our game plan so I think um yeah although I'm biased um she's definitely um playing some good footy and I think her alongside Claude's Whitford one of our other mids they yeah. just work really well together they've kind of um got this good partnership going yeah yeah you mentioned about the club being taught though to fit that build perfect in that space Sorry, it just cut out. I didn't quite hear you. That's all right. That's all right. So you mentioned about the club being contestant of courts and um, they both fit that build perfectly. That fits out of the club then? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And our coach talks a lot about it and we kind of build our, our DNA is a little bit, um, as we call it, is our contested work. So, and I think yeah. the numbers this year really show that we're really good at getting the footy first um, and then it's just our decisions after that. So we've got quite a few players that um, really lead that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Who do, you, who do you feel wins the best player at the end of the season in the competition? Is it, Charlie would obviously be up mm. there, but is there any other names along with her that you think could be in contention? Because I've got my own medal and I've got like a yeah. couple of rounds to go. I've still got like 10 names that could easily win. It's that hard to yeah. pick still right now. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of girls that are playing some good footy and um, I think ones to keep your eye out for is, and they're probably the usual household names, but your Jazz Garner mm. from North Melbourne, your Ed Marinoff mm. from, from Crows, um, yeah, Monconti from Richmond. There's there's definitely a few a few names being thrown out there, I imagine. For sure. Uh, who, who loves the line, the, intention, the attention, the camera can, can just not get enough of it? <laughs> who loves the attention from the camera? Um, <laughs> There's probably a few players that fit that, but um, yeah. I think the day the Davies girls, Giselle and Dust, oh, yeah. they like to yeah. yeah they like to try and um, get in front of the camera where they can. <laughs> if you could poach any player or players from another from another club, who would you want to take from that club? Ooh, 
That's an interesting one. Um, as I said, I'm really loving what our club's doing at the moment um, and what we're building with our culture, but um, um, it's one that comes to mind. Probably, I guess, and maybe just thinking of playing them this weekend, maybe Tani Evans. She's a handy little um, backliner. Um, yep. So, Johnson. yeah, potentially, yeah. Any, any good off-field stories of the club that people don't know too much about, say something like a journey of, like, for example, like yours, where it's come from an outside footy one to get into AF or AFRW, anything like that that comes to mind? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, Anyone that's had, a, say, like, even a bad injury rehab, like they had continuous yeah. injuries and they've got back out there? Um, In terms of people I know or at the club, do you mean? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just in general. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, we've had, obviously, Stano came back from ACL um, last year and she's just come back and she's really found her form this year, I think, as well because, um, yeah. obviously, ACL is a tough, a tough one to work through and, yeah. and she's done that and come back. Um, yeah, that's probably the one that comes to mind. Yeah. What's something someone does at the club that you just cannot stand and you just hate it every time <laughs> they do it? Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm probably someone that... Um, kind of goes with the flow of most things so there's probably not too much of a bugbear um right. but and we we always give her a bit of grief about it but charlie robottom is a bit of a messy character she leaves boots okay. all around the place um doesn't <laughs> tend to bug me too much but probably her locker buddies get a bit um get a bit bugged by it okay, you, you mentioned boots too have you obviously now it seems to be a trend these days that people with signs or whatever ask for people's boots if you had yeah. Anyone, have you been in that position where you've been asked for boots or a teammate you've seen have boots that may be a bit reluctant to do that because they might be their only pair? Yeah, yeah. I haven't been asked myself. Um, and it's funny you say that. We were talking about this last mm. week. It's just become yeah. a big trend. But certainly for us, yeah. we um, we don't have many pairs of boots. And for me mm. personally, I, I have to wear my boots in for a while before I'm comfortable with them. Yeah. Um, so giving away boots is quite a tricky one. Yeah, I've only really got one or two pairs that I'll wear at the moment that I'm really comfortable in. And, um, yeah, we certainly can't can't afford to be giving away boots every week. <laughs> That's for sure. What's up? Uh, yeah. AFW Fantasy, have you heard about it? Yeah, a little bit. I probably am not too on top of it, but certainly, okay. yeah, you hear bits and pieces. Yeah, so so basically, you pick yeah, you pick your own team. I think you have I think it's five defenders, six mids, a ruckman, and five forwards. Well, and you have one bench play for each position. Um, who would you feel would be someone that would pick themselves, even if even if they <laughs> are playing regularly? Who would be who would pick themselves? No matter how good who or would pick, good yeah, they are. Yeah, who would pick themselves? Hmm. I don't know. Certainly everyone I know at the club I don't think would um, mm. would pick themselves in their team. Yeah. Very lucky. Think, anyone that yeah. – go on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone in our club would, would do that um, off the top of my head. This may be a similar answer then. Does anyone check their stats after the game whenever you get a chance to get back to your phones or, or wants to compare stats or has it like a, a competition between each other going – I'm going to beat you in whatever category, whether it's disposal, <laughs> goals or whatnot. Yeah, no, we don't tend to have that. And uh, I think it's come from our coaching staff this year. They've been really mm. big on um, certainly like disposals and things. We look at them, yeah. but that's not the whole picture because if you've got a role yeah. where it's not about you getting the footy, you're tagging, for instance, or you're trying mm. to take another player out of the game and you're not going to get the footy. Our coaches have been really big on encouraging that, um, not so much just stats because that doesn't tell the whole story. So, we don't yeah. tend to be, yeah, there's not really that comparison. Um, like I think a few of us will look at our stats after a game because I'm just interested in how many touches I got. But we more would just go back and vision, mm. watch what we did and um, watch like our our touches and what we could have done better rather than looking at the pure numbers. Mm. Yeah. What's one of the toughest opponents you've ever been on in the AFRW so far? Toughest opponents? Hmm. And it's been kind of interesting this year because it is just a slightly different look on the wing compared to in the back line. Um, yeah. Like wing, obviously, we play probably a little bit further off, whereas back line, you're kind of right on your player. Um, mm. At one point last year, not for the whole game, but I was on Taylor mm. Harris. Um, that oh, was definitely, okay. yeah, a hard one. You're waiting for her to jump up and take a spectacular mark on you, so that can be quite yeah. tricky. Yeah. So, mark or goal, the year, which one would you prefer? Oh, I think goal of the year. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because a lot of the guests I've had on that I've asked this question to probably yep. it's probably five out of seven have gone for Mark. So I'm glad you said the goal because that's <laughs> the one I want. I would play yes. when I used to play as a forward. That 
There's yeah. nothing better. Yes, you can get some good marks, but some goals, as you mentioned, from the pocket or whatnot, like Salary did, some of them aren't easy to come by. And I, I personally would love that, but I'm glad you said that one. Um, yeah. Rising star contender, who do you feel would be a chance to win? I've, again, as I said to a previous guest, I've been torn between Zali Goldsworthy and Ali Morford. I don't know if you've got any other names, but it's yeah. too tough for me still to pick between those two. Who would you feel would be the rising star winner this year? Ooh, yeah, that's a tricky one, isn't it? They're, particularly those two, mm. they just seem like they're playing mm. really, really good footy. Um, unfortunately for Ali mm. Morford, she's out a little bit with injury, I think, at the moment. That's right, yeah, so with injury. Potentially, yeah. yeah, potentially that might be how um, Zali Goldsworthy gets on top. Um, but yeah. she's playing some great footy and that certainly is a bit of a, a, bit of a focus mm. for our group with this game coming up. Um, we'll try and shut her down for sure. Who's a player at Gold Coast or anyone in general in the competition competition that you feel is a bit underappreciated, that doesn't get talked about as much as some of the bigger names that mm. should be appreciated more? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there definitely would be – there'd be a lot out there and I think it can be quite hard within each team because, as I said, a lot of what mm. um, AFL tends to look at is disposals numbers, how much you yeah. get the footy, and there's definitely players in the team who are playing other roles that are super, super important but probably don't get the footy as much. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think I think every team would have them and I think potentially for us, um, yeah, some of our midfielders, so maybe Claude Whitford um, can go under the radar a bit but she does some really good things mm. for our team. Um, yeah, and I think sometimes in the back line too, a lot of back liners have it a bit trickier because they can kind of fly mm. under the radar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this might kind of answer the same question here, but big improvers at the Gold Coast, some, some of that's kind of got, gone from out of nowhere from being oh, not bad or anything, but like, you know, on a solid level to just, just rising up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think our whole group um, has stepped up another level and that was really what we were trying to achieve in the off season and pre season. But um, yeah. I think, I th definitely think Claude's has really stepped up a level this year. I think Dupes um, is really playing out of her shell. Um, a lot of our back line are quite new in terms of they've played footy, but not at the Gold Coast Suns. So like Clara, yeah. Mira, um, and then Viv and Loz really leading it back there. So I think um, really all over the field and I, I think individuals mm. are stepping up but just even as a team we're just playing a different mm. um, a different method of footy which has really stepped up for us. A few more questions for you. Appreciate you coming on, Georgia. Um, extended season, how how do you feel? That you're happy that this, this season the season is going to be extended next year and I think it's two more games to 12 and then over a few years after that more? Yeah, ideally, and I think um, the CBA obviously was a big discussion this year and um, mm. and the AFLPA does a really good job of speaking on behalf of us players. Um, I feel quite strongly about more games. I just think in yeah. terms of the AFLW development, the more games we can play, the better it's going to get. The um, the level of what, you know, what you're watching for the spectators, um, the athleticism of the players, I think with more games that gets better. So ideally... Yeah. Um, hopefully over the years that will increase. And I think it just makes for a fair uh, competition as well. When when you yeah. only have 10 games, it's really dependent. It can be quite dependent on your draw and who you're playing. Um, right. Whereas yeah. if we can increase it by just a few games, um, it's more fair if you're getting closer to playing everyone once. Yeah. That's right. It's, that's what it should be because, like you said, there's seven, no, there's not 10, yeah, nine. So you've got nine teams you don't play and, you know, then you could argue yeah. that some of the bottom teams are playing against each other and you guys, for example, might only play one of them once and it gets a bit uneven. Yeah. So, yeah, more games, so that will even that bit out and eliminate that a bit better. Uh, one final yeah. question, pressure coming on. The premiership tip for this year is Ooh. a goal. Oh, well, I'd love to say that. Up the Suns. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the plan for sure. One game at a time, but that's that's the end goal. George, I really appreciate you coming on. All the best for the rest of the reigning few games and more in the finals, hopefully. Um, and all the best for that. I yeah. appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Take care. No.